to my former players, um, uh, so proud of you and proud of what you did, how you bought into the program. Um, nothing makes me more proud than get to get a call or get a letter from a former player that tells me he still uses some of the things, some of the lessons and values that he learned in football to this day, whether it be in his job or raising his family. And it happens frequently, and um, I want to just want to thank those guys because that's what it's all about. That's what it's always been about for me, is, is being about the athletes, the student athletes, and, and how we can help Richter them. Richter quickly narrowed the search for a new coach to West Virginia's Don Nealon and Notre Dame defensive coordinator Barry Alvarez, who spent New Year's nights of 1990 coaching the Fighting Irish at the Orange Bowl. I've been in the Big Ten. I was eight years at Iowa, and then coaching at Notre Dame, the three years I was there, I recruited the Midwest. When the job opened up, I felt like this was a job that would be a good fit for me. He had everything to lose, and so the motivation to be successful was there, and, and we needed somebody that had that kind of a, a, a mindset coming into Wisconsin. And then I called him and out of Florida, I said, how would you like to be the next uh, head coach at the University of Wisconsin? And he said, great. I probably had two hours sleep and got on a private plane with Pat Richter and flew to Madison, so I was, I was running on adrenaline. Hey, let me just say this. There's an air about Barry Alvarez, not only that day, but even to this day. When he walks in a room, heads turn, and there's some sort of charisma that you maybe can't define, but you know it's there. But you put it in context of what Badger football was like when Barry Alvarez walked into that news conference. The season before, attendance for the last home game in Michigan State when they played here was under 30,000. But Barry Alvarez walks in and he, he looked, somebody asked a question over to the right. Something like, well, what are you going to tell season ticket holders that, that maybe are so down on Badger football that, you know, maybe this thing couldn't get turned around? Looks to his right now. They better get season tickets right now because before long, they probably won't be able to. And people in the room went, boy, he's selling us something. And then right after that, they went, gee, I think this really might happen. And it turns out it didn't take very long. Guys played as hard as they could. We just weren't very good. So I knew we had the players. We had their interest. We had their total attention. They were buying in. I'd always say two things. I'd say, follow the plan and don't flinch. And so if you strayed from the plan, you were flinching. I know who's recruiting you. I know you can go to other schools. You might go to a bowl game every year, and you may have a great career, and those people may remember you. But if you go to Wisconsin, I guarantee you, by the time you leave, we'll win the Rose Bowl, and these people will never forget your name. Nothing like the first Rose Bowl. That'll be hard to beat, although going to Tokyo to win a game to clinch that was right there with it. That was pretty special. They go from rice to roses, from State Street to the Colorado Boulevard. The Badgers are in the Rose Bowl. Pasadena and, and L.A. starts showing, red starts showing up, waves and waves. And I told players, we're going to take that field. It'll be like a home game. We were the home team. We were wearing red jerseys. I remember Terry Donahue. We had their locker room. <laughs> Terry Donahue asked, um, you know, that's our home locker room. We have our decorations in there. Why don't we, you just take the visitor's locker room. We'll keep, no. I said, no, you take the visitor's locker room. We're the home team. We'll take the home team locker room. So we moved them out of their home locker room. And that's the way we approached it. But when we took the field, it took, takes your breath away. First of all, it's such a pretty sight. I think it's the prettiest venue in all of sport. And then to see the thing full of red. UCLA has a card section. The card section was 80% red. They had scalped their tickets. Yep. So our, our, play, you know, our players weren't overwhelmed. Um, they felt like it was a home game. It's rah-rah time in La La Land, and we're set for Rose Bowl 94. When we went out for a press conference, I can remember telling them, we'll have a great crowd here. I took on the approach with our team. We're going to have the home locker room. We're going to be wearing red. And when we take the field, it's going to be Camp Randall West. And to see so much red out there was like, wow, you know, Wisconsin did come down there and take this to the other for like 10 weeks. When we came out, it was like being at home. You just hear the crowd just... This is supposed to be UCLA's home field. 
and it's like all you can see is red. Just gives me goosebumps thinking about how much people really were excited about the team and excited about being from Wisconsin. I think that team and what we did to build up to that team laid the groundwork and the foundation for what we do today. Now Wisconsin known for football, known for smash mouth, known for guys who are willing to lay it out on the football field every day. It's just as amazing to see how they've taken that first Rose Bowl and being a part of that team that turned the corner. Two more Rose Bowls come, you know, 99, 2000. It's like, that was it. Wisconsin was here to stay.